Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be testing these Arctic water coolers again, the Liquid Freezer 2s. We've got various sizes from 120 millimeters all the way up to 420 millimeters. And basically what we're going to be doing is testing them on the new i9 processors from Intel. That's the 12900K, which generally get extremely hot. And we're going to see if these can actually handle it. We do have links in the description below if you're interested in purchasing, as well as prices. So first of all, the test setup. The test setup was a i9-12900K processor, as well as an i7-12700K Intel processor. Both of these processors use a lot of power, which means they get very, very hot when under full load, but when they're not being used full load, they are actually very environmental friendly, or at least high efficiency due to the core layouts on them. All testing was done on the same machine. Well, only difference was we swapped out the CPU and the cooler depending on the test we're doing. We were disconnected from the internet, so nothing could interfere, and all background tasks was disabled. So everything will be identical in the tests. We've done a basic idle test and a full load test on both CPUs and the difference between the tests is on an idle test we set the fan speed at 50% and on the full test so when we're doing a full load the fans are set at 100% speed so you can get an exact result from the tests. So down to the first test, as you can see here, we're testing the idle CPU temperature. The room temperature is 21 degrees Celsius and the fan is set at 50% speed. And as you can see here from all our testing, all the results came in at either 22 or 21 degrees Celsius. And that includes the air cooler we're using for comparison, which is Arctic Freezer I-35 ARGB. As you can see, they're all pretty much the same as in the results. Okay, on this test results, we're looking at 100% load, 100% fan speed, and this is on the i9-12900K. And as you can see here, only two of the coolers actually passed the test. Nothing was able to cool it down enough without it thermal throttling, apart from the 280mm and the 420mm version, which got 77 and 70 degrees Celsius. Don't get me wrong, the other coolers like the 320 and the 240 were close, but they did thermal throttle. And for our results, thermal throttling means it has failed. If you're not sure what that means, it basically means it gets so hot where the CPU has to slow itself down so it doesn't crash and overheat. On this test we did exactly the same thing again but we swapped out the processor for an i7-12700K and as you can see here all the coolers did actually pass the test including the air cooler which came in at 84 degrees Celsius. Still a little bit hot though in all honesty. The 120 mil one came in at 74 degrees Celsius but the best performing and generally is going to be because it's the largest one there with the largest surface area is the 420 millimeter version coming in at 59 degrees celsius which was very very good but saying that most of them do perform pretty well if i was to pick any i would stick with the 280 320 or two sorry or the 420 millimeter versions one thing we always notice when testing these water coolers is the 280mm version always beats the 360mm version. We rerun these tests three times so we can get the average from all tests and every single test we did on the i9 with the 360mm uh, cooler it actually failed. In comparison the 280mm one actually passed. There may only be a couple of degrees difference on some tests and so forth but that can make all the difference between a pass and a fail. I'm guessing for some reason that the 280mm version may have a slightly better pump in it compared to the 320mm version. So you're probably asking, can you overclock? The answer is yes you can, but only just. For example, the 12900K, we were able to overclock it on the 420 millimeter radiator. It did get up to around about 85 degrees Celsius, running the performance cores at 5.2 gigahertz, and the 
efficiency cores at 4.1 gigahertz. Uh, with the i7, we were able to do roughly the same thing again, uh, and the temperatures on that were closer to around about 74 degrees. It's still pretty hot though, so take it with a pinch of salt and obviously do at your own risk and make sure your case has got plenty of airflow if you are going to overclock with these things these processors are very 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 hot thank you for watching this video everyone it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end please make sure you subscribe like comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams it does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time